willkommen zum Klassiker. Borussia Dortmund und Bayern München, the two preeminent German clubs of the past five years, meet again at the magnificent Signal Iduna Park here in Dortmund, Western Germany. Over 81,000 packed into this behemoth of an arena in the land of the new world champions. It's the double winners against the double runners up, but you can forget about favourites. Jurgen Klopp's black and yellow ensemble have proven time and again they are the one side who can indeed challenge the mighty Bayern domestically. After a summer of absolute glory for German football on the whole, it's a case of domestic rivalries resumed, and that for the third year running in the Super Cup, the now traditional Bundesliga curtain raiser. Thomas Hitzelsberger is sat alongside me, and Thomas, I trust you've suitably celebrated Germany's World Cup win and are looking forward to the new season as much as the rest of us. Of course, yeah. Uh, good evening, Andy. It's been a great uh, World Cup for us, great summer, and now it starts with this game tonight. We're looking forward to it. two best German teams. What can we ask for more than that? Well, it really is a case of the best teams as well. I mean, we've looked at the lineups already, and we can tell you that certainly there are plenty of big names in there, also ones that played in the World Cup final in Brazil. Yes, I'm surprised to see some of those uh, guys who won the World Cup in Brazil that are actually playing tonight. But uh, obviously, uh, Guardiola, he trusts them, he knows they're fit enough, and he, he takes the risk, in my opinion, because the, the Bundesliga is only uh, 10 days away from, from today. And uh, hopefully, you know, we see a good game with some very good players out there tonight. Well, it's certainly the first big test for many of these players, and it'll certainly do them good to get a run out against a team or opposition of such uh, undoubted quality. The teams are in the tunnel, I believe, and uh, we're just about to be treated to a choreographed display from the DFL pre-kickoff. Just about to get underway down on the pitch, but certainly the two sides looking at them, it bodes well for a, a real good game tonight. Yes, we're all looking forward to it, and it's packed again, 81,000 here tonight. Um, I said, great evening, and we can expect a lot tonight, I think. Well, the atmosphere is absolutely incredible. Away to our left, Thomas, is what's known over here as the Gelbe Wand, the yellow wall. Just tell us, what's it like to walk out in front of a crowd like this? Yeah, well, I, I've had dreams, you know, when I was a kid playing in this, in this arena, and uh, fortunately, I was able to play there a few times. It's, it's the best stadium in Germany, if not in the world. I mean, honestly, you, you go out there in the front of 25,000 against the Gelbe Wand, and it, it's so hard to, to win here in, in the Signal Iduna Park. Uh, but I've managed it once, so I've got good memories of the stadium, and uh, it was a tremendous uh, experience. Well, you mentioned it's 25,000. It is, in fact, the largest freestanding terrace in Europe, if not the world. Borussia Dortmund uh, certainly say that it's the biggest terrace in the world, and it really is quite imposing. The opening ceremony just about to get underway. We're about three and a half minutes away from kickoff, and it's going to be one to savor, I can assure you.
Well, there we have it, a wonderful display from the DFL, the Deutsche Fußballliga, German Football League. We're going through the lineup, starting with Borussia Dortmund. It's a strong lineup, but there are certainly faces missing. Mitch Langerek in goal, Lukas Piszczek, Socrates, Ginter and Schmelzer across the back. It's Sebastian Kehl who captains the side, possibly for the final time in defensive midfield. Jonas Hofmann, Henrik Mkhitaryan and the super speedy Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang in midfield, supporting Ciro Immobile, the new signing up front. Top scorer in Italy last term with Torino with 22 goals. Thomas, it's a strong side, but uh, still a few faves is missing. It is indeed a strong side. They've got a very good squad, but unfortunately, the best player is missing. The best player last season, Marco Royce. We've been, well, we could say we've missed him in the World Cup, but we could do without him. But certainly, he's the best player in Germany right now. Um, it, it's sad not to see him play tonight, but they still have a very good side. Well, we just saw a picture of him there as well. Borussia Dortmund, of course, also missing Robert Lewandowski, who, well, he's on the other side. There he is again. Yeah, Bayern Munich. It, it, it's hard to see him on the other side because, you know, he was, he's been tremendous for Dortmund and now to see him with the best team in the country, Bayern Munich, makes him even stronger, really hard. Well, there we have the Dortmund lineup, uh, sorry, the Bayern lineup, and it's considerably uh, stronger than we expected. Manuel Neuer, the World Cup winner in goal, he captains the side as well. Boateng, Martinez and Alaba across the back. It's a very young midfield with Hoiberg, Roda, Gaudino and Bernat. And then uh, the forward line, well, that really is uh, going to take some stopping. Thomas Muller, Jerdan Shakiri, and Robert Lewandowski. Well, Robert Lewandowski, the big name, but uh, when we were looking at the lineups, Thomas, it really was Muller that surprised us. Yes, very surprised to see Muller there. He's played all the games for Germany in the World Cup, and, and to see him here tonight is, is a big surprise for me. But it just shows, you know, he, he's got the hunger. He still wants to come back and play. He doesn't want to miss a game. Uh, great attitude from him. I'm not surprised that he's got that attitude. Uh, he's been tremendous, uh, and we'll hopefully see some from him tonight. And where do you see the key battles emerging today? Um, as I said, you know, I'm surprised by the lineup from Bayern. They've got some very experienced players. It's the two systems we're going to look at today with Dortmund playing with a four at the back and Bayern, it looks as if they're playing with a three, a three at the back. See how that comes out. So it's going to be very interesting tactically. It certainly is. And uh, Lewandowski is uh, going to have his hands full, certainly against Socrates and Ginter, two very physical players. Ginter didn't play at the World Cup, but he's a player who's come in uh, from Freiburg over the summer and certainly has a lot of potential. He has, yeah. Another good signing from uh, Jurgen Klopp, I think. Uh, hopefully he will settle in quickly. Uh, it shows he plays here tonight, and, and I wish he has a good game here tonight. But it's certainly a good team that he's coming up against. Well, the two captains in the centre, Manuel Neuer on the left of Bayern München, and Sebastian Kehl on the right from Dortmund. Actually won't be the captain uh, in the forthcoming season. That will be Mats Hummels, who doesn't play this evening. Uh, do you think that's a good choice in, in the long term? Well, I think it was Sebastian Kiel, uh wish not to be the captain anymore because he knows there's so many young players coming through. He won't be there for many more years, so he, he probably thought it might be better to give it, hand it over to some other younger player. And Matt Hummels is probably the perfect uh, you know, player to step up in this place and, and be the next captain. So I, I'm not surprised to see this, and it shows the character of Sebastian Kiel. He, he's not just thinking about himself, he thinks about the team and the club. Well, Robert Lewandowski we saw in the centre with uh, Thomas Muller a few moments ago. He's followed Mario Götze's lead in leaving Dortmund for the mighty Bayern. And, uh, well, you wouldn't bank against him scoring against his former club here today, would you? No, it'd be interesting to see his reaction if he scores, because we know what Götze did when he scored here. He didn't want to celebrate, but still he was booed off the pitch by the fans, um, understandably, because, you know, he's left this team here and the fans are really angry. And uh, we've heard similar reactions here tonight from Lewandowski. Lewandowski. Well, off we go. The Super Cup 2014 between Borussia Dortmund and Bayern München. Peter Gagelmann is our referee in the centre. And it's the 15th edition of this competition. It's had something of a potted history. First started back in 1987 and pitting the Bundesliga champions against the DFB Cup winners. And it was discontinued for a time, but it returned under the supervision of the DFL, the German Football League, in 2010. And ever since then, it's been a great way to get the Bundesliga campaign underway. It certainly is, as I said, playing the two best teams here. Is, it's always great for the fans. Don't get tired of watching football, even though Germany's won the World Cup. They want to see more Bundesliga action. And here, starting with the Super Cup is a great way to start it. Bayern with an early attack. Shakiri being chased out. And Dortmund able to clear. 
It's young Gianluca Gaudino on the ball. If you don't recognise him, the Bayern number 16. Maybe an early chance for Dortmund to get away here. Alaba, though, has got the pace to get there ahead of Aubameyang. And we were talking about key battles before the kickoff, Thomas, and uh, that really is going to be an intriguing one. The pace of Alaba. Can and he handle Obama? Yeah. Yes, I think so. And uh, I think Guardiola, he wants to play uh, Alaba in midfield some point this season. But today or tonight, he, he's, he's made the choice to play him left back again because Obama, he's got the pace. And if you only got three at the back, there's a lot, lot of uh, space there and you need to cover it. And I think Alaba is the right one uh, to do that. It almost looks as though Dortmund have set up in 4-4-2. Uh, I mean, we've seen it before already in, in pre-season that Aubameyang has joined Immobile up front. I mean, that could be interesting to see how they, they actually shape up. We've seen him tear down the right. Uh, well, whether uh, he remains there or, or does come in field remains to be seen, I suppose. It won't be static, of course not. They'll, they'll be move around there and, uh, you know, they just start with two up front, but Aubameyang will, will, you know, run a lot and use the space. This is Shakiri. Early chance for Bayern. Palmed away by Mitch Langerak. Borussia Dortmund's Australian goalkeeper. Did travel to the World Cup in Brazil, but didn't make an appearance. But uh, he's got a very good record between the sticks for Dortmund, hasn't he? They've always seemed to do well when, when he's been in goal, and certainly an ample replacement, certainly looking to the future as well for Roman Weidenfeller. Yes, they're very fortunate again to have two very good goalkeepers. And... Um... Good for him to play tonight, gives him more experience, and if he's getting a chance over the next few years, uh, you know, Dortmund shouldn't be worried with, with their keeper. He's very good indeed. And there's Bayern's keeper, Manuel Neuer. He just trotted out of his area there, and that's something we can probably get used to. And I think that's what we're going to see tonight, Lewandowski and Socrates. Uh, Socrates will make it very difficult for, for Lewandowski. He knows him so well, he knows his strengths, and he will close him down as often as he can, of course, and won't give him space. So it'll be an interesting battle to watch tonight. Certainly, Socrates, a very physical player, and uh, he came in last season, obviously signed from Werder Bremen. Most people expecting him to play a backup role, but then the injury to Nevin Subotic, who had partnered Mats Hummels in the heart of the Dortmund defence for so long. And he came in and really did well, didn't he? He did, he did indeed. And, and he would probably again play this season. And, and this is a great chance for him to shine here against Lewandowski. This is Immobile for Dortmund. Looks like he was brought down there, but nothing given by the referee and Bayern able to break. Roda, Shakiri. Lewandowski was looking to peel behind, but Shakiri instead loses possession. Javi Martinez. Dortmund with a very compact midfield early on. They know that they need to get up in the faces of Bayern. It very much is a case of pressing against possession today. It is, and, and we see Martinez you know, carrying the ball forward. To me, he's, he's a better midfield player than a defender, but Guardiola thinks differently. And, you know, I wouldn't want to argue with him, but uh, Martinez has been brilliant for Bayern in midfield, but now he plays at the back, and he certainly knows how to get into midfield and then uh, puts a striker in and uh, start to play from there. Here's Kirsch. Aubameyang. Brought down by Sebastian Roder. New signing from Frankfurt. Came in somewhat under the radar over the summer from Bayern. It was announced the transfer a good while before. But from what I've seen him, it, certainly for Frankfurt and in pre-season for Bayern as well, he's got a real tenacity about him. Certainly gets stuck into the challenge. And he's that kind of player who can turn a defence into attack very quickly. He can. I think he's, he's a good um, signing for Bayern, but everyone's been talking about Lewandowski, so he got there under the radar a little bit. Cross coming in from Kiesch, Aubameyang. Ooh. Martinez had to deal with it. I think he should given. Have left it to Hoffman. Hoffman was a good position to get the ball down and have a shot, so it's unfortunate he didn't get the ball. Well, there is a strong Bayern contingent, an away contingent away to our right, but... Uh, Let's be honest, uh, it's quite imposing to see so many yellow shirts in this stadium. We're absolutely surrounded, aren't we? Yes, we are. And it's always great to be back. The atmosphere is just immense. It's, it's always great being here. David Alaba. Good charging down from Dortmund. That's a feature of their play. They do like to 
Press high up the pitch, try and harass their opponents. It's exactly what you need to do to bring Bayern out of their stride. Bayern do get a free kick, though. Well, Dortmund are, of course, the holders of this competition. They won it last season 4-2 in Munich uh, against Bayern. Thanks in large part to Marco Royce, two goals from him. And uh, he's a player they're chomping out the bit out to get back into the fold, I'm sure. Yeah, we miss him here tonight. It's, it's you know, watching him, as I said, he was player of the season last season. Uh, now he's out with injury. It's, it's a shame. So hopefully he'll come back soon because they need him. If they want to challenge Bayern for the Bundesliga and a cup competition, they really need him. It's almost a shame not to see him in the Germany World Cup squad as well. Yeah, but uh, what can we, can we say about this? They did it without him. And I'm sure when he comes back, they will be even stronger. I can tell you that Thomas has a beaming smile every time we bring the World Cup subject up. <laughs> Here's Pierre Hoiberg for Bayern. Up against Marcel Schmelzer. Shakiri. The space for Bernat, but uh, cut out by Lukas Piszczek. And Bayern must build again. David Alaba on the left of a defensive three today, but he has been tried out at centre-back and even in centre midfield, which, to be fair, is where he plays for the Austrian national team. Where do you think David Alaba is best off, Thomas? Well, I've seen him most of the time, of course, as a left-back, and I thought he's, he's, I still think he's a great player in, in that position. But then, as I said, Guardiola, he's watched him, he's tried him in, in, in training, of course, in his practice matches and saw him as a, def uh, as a midfield player. And he must have enough quality to play there for Bayern. But as a left-back, he's certainly one of the best at the moment. Oh, Lewandowski wasn't quite able to get the ball under control a few moments ago. Martinez showing typical composure on the ball. Here's Juan Bernat, uh, another new signing from Valencia. Third Spaniard to join Bayern after Martinez and Thiago. Thiago, another one who's missing for Bayern at the moment, a setback in his injury woes pre-season. Bayern obviously had an excellent first campaign under Pep Guardiola last season. They won the domestic double. But after winning the Champions League in 2013 and the treble and all the pomp and ceremony that came with it, it almost felt like a disappointment. What has Pep Guardiola, uh, Pep Guardiola got to do in his second year at Bayern to really make his tenure a success? Or, or has he already done so? Well, it's, it's a strange feeling that, that there was last season because they won the Bundesliga quicker than any other team before them. And then they got to the semi-final in the Champions League and won the cup. And still there's a feeling that they didn't have a great season. So this is how football goes these days. Guardiola, you know, tipped to be the best manager in the world. So the only thing left there for him is winning the treble again this season. But it will be very, very hard. Uh, and I think he's a great manager. And Romanica said it, and Oli Hoeneß also said, they're so fortunate to have him there. And I think you, you can't have a better, man better manager than him right now. Well, the players certainly seem to agree. Robert Lewandowski not quite able to... Get that under control. Here's Bernat. Lewandowski is going to be receiving close attention. The Dortmund players will be doing everything they possibly can to stop him, and they might get a break here. This is Immobile. He's going to have a go, and he's got the shot away. He wasn't far away from Giro Immobile, maybe. It's a good try, but I think there was space to pass the ball into Aubameyang. He, he was there to receive the ball. And he, he waited a little bit too long for the shot. Oh, no, it wasn't Aubameyang. Well, there was space on the left, and I think he should have played it in. A mistake by David Alaba in the build-up to give the ball away from Bayern as well. We don't see that very often, we don't see that very often from him. Well, the first real opportunity of the game going the way of Dortmund, although Shakiri had that uh, shot early on, which was palmed away by Langerak. We're... Nearly 13 minutes into the game now. Thomas, what are your early impressions? Well, you know, we haven't seen that much yet. Not many great opportunities, but both teams, I think, at this point, don't want to risk too much. It's Well, they said it's a final. It's not pre-season friendly, but they want to win it. And I think that take, it takes their time to get into the game. Uh, I think I'm sure we'll get a lot more to see within the next, you know, 25, 30 minutes. And Pep Guardiola getting involved there on the touchline. Quick reactions from him to get out of the way. Nice turn from Thomas Muller. 
Real surprise that he's in the starting lineup tonight. Five goals in Brazil, and that after five goals in South Africa in 2010 at the World Cup. Miro Closer may have got the record this year, but Thomas Muller must have it in his sights. I think so, yeah, that's what I was saying during the World Cup. It might be Thomas Muller who, who follows in Closer's footsteps and scores even more goals than he has. He's certainly got time on his side. 24 still, Thomas Muller. Seems unbelievable the amount of experience he's got. It really is impressive. Not just the goal that he scores, his runs are phenomenal. Everyone says that as in football, his runs are so different to any other one, any other the players. That makes him stand out. Mikitarian didn't quite pull the trigger in time there when it opened up for him, but uh, still Dortmund have it. Piszczek drives it across. Aubameyang overlapping Schmelzer. It's aimed at Hoffmann. Bayern work together to clear eventually through Roda. And find Lewandowski. Muller in support. Well, I was going to ask you, Thomas, what kind of a reception did you think Robert Lewandowski could get? And I think there's our evidence. Yes, uh, it, well, you, you could have asked me before. I think it was difficult to, to tell because there's, there's a point to, to have seen him gone. But it's been going on for many, many months, and you know, Bayer wanted him for so long, and finally it's gone through. Uh, not good for the Dortmund fans, but hopefully Immobile will do a good job, and Ramos when he comes on, that uh, they will they will make uh, Lewandowski forget soon. Well, that is of course the task we spoke before kickoff about the players that Klopp has brought in. He has uh, managed to compensate for players before. Shakiri's ball in. Dortmund half clear. Well, Javi Martinez may have gone out in the group stage with Spain at the World Cup, but that's probably a good thing from Bayern's point of view. The fact that he's home a bit earlier and managed to get a proper pre-season in. I think, yeah, it is. You, so many German players in that team, so I think Guardiola's happy that Spain didn't go all the way and go to the final. He's got three Spanish players now. So I think that's good for Guardiola and Bayern. Same goes for Robert Lewandowski, of course, as well. Poland didn't qualify for the World Cup, and he's fresh, raring to go. And his performances last season in the Bundesliga suggest that he could rule the roost in terms of goal scoring for some years to come. Certainly, yeah, and I think he will be, be up there again this season. Uh, just a, a question of will he do? Will he score 20 or more goals? He's that good, and the delivery, you know, from both sides when Ribery come in, Robin. Uh, the best support you can get and uh, be interested to see how many goals he scores this season. Throw into Bayern. Bernat takes into the feet of Lewandowski, again surrounded by Dortmund defenders. Socrates clears. Dortmund struggling to clear their lines. Gaudino. the break is on you hear the roar of the signal Iduna Park as Dortmund pour forward Aubameyang too many Bayern bodies in the centre and Dortmund come again Roger and Boateng doing the clearing there and you have to say he had the game of his life in the World Cup final. He must be absolutely buzzing ahead of this season. He said it himself, it was probably the best game of his life. And, you know, if you have your best game of your life in the World Cup final, um, isn't that a dream coming true? Certainly. So he's come back to Bayern and he's, he's raring to go again. That's why he's playing here tonight. He's not asking for rest, he wants to play. And let's not forget as well, Mario Götze, who scored the winning goal in Brazil on the bench for Bayern tonight as well. I wonder if we'll see him later on. Probably can expect a similar reception once again to the one he got last November when he scored the opening goal for Bayern with his first touch of the game upon returning to Dortmund. Yes, if, if Lewandowski does that tonight, he will probably get a similar reaction from the fans. But it won't really bother him, I think. He's there for Bayern to score goals and not for Dortmund anymore. It's that's part of the game these days. And uh, as I said, be interested to see the reaction, but that's it. And then you've got to continue playing and... Uh, do the best for your new, new team, new club. Here's Ginter.
Oh, and Ooh. Manuel Neuer having to clear off his line there. My, oh, my. Well, I could see the assistant referee down to our right sprinting to try and get a look at that. I'd love to see a replay, Thomas. Well, he, yeah, he was surprised to, to see that back pass. Still the chance is on. And it was Kirsch with the strike. Good save by Neuer. Well, a nervy moment in the Bayern defence. I think it was Martinez with the pass. And Neuer scrambling to get back on his line. Dortmund press again. Piszczek. Kale into Mkhitaryan. It's Piszczek again. He does like to get forward on that right-hand side. Both he and Schmelzer are uh, the left-back as well for Dortmund. Langerak comes to clear. Well, here we can see how close that actually was. Well, there's the save from Neuer. Here the pass from Martinez. Oh, well, it was mighty close, but it wasn't in. No, it, it no wasn't. No need for goal line technology there. But you don't need that. I think it brought Dortmund a little bit back into the game because Bayern had a lot more possession. Uh, and now it, it's Dortmund again, which is good to see because um, they've been a bit, you know, on the back foot. And uh, But now they have more possession. And I think Martinez did them a favour. They're waking up again. The Jurgen Klopp, like Pep Guardiola, is uh, out on the touchline. Both coaches gesticulating wildly on the sideline. They do have different styles. It's very much uh, tracksuit against suit and tie, isn't it? It is, and it won't change. I think with Jurgen Klopp, you'll always see him in a tracksuit. It just he doesn't he doesn't look that good in a suit. So, and he knows that, and that sets his style. That's what Dalton was known for. You know, it's hard work. It's it's turning up in your tracksuit and uh, fight for 90 minutes, and uh, that's what they usually do. That's what you get from them. It's almost what makes this rivalry so fantastic. The fact that you've got the two different styles, the two different cities, and it's reflected in every possible way. Even the styles of play on the pitch, the pressing and the possession, as we've discussed, it really has become an enthralling encounter every time you watch it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see Dortmund maintaining that level for the last four or five years. They've been up there chasing Bayern uh, because before that we've seen coming and going, but Dortmund, they now have the power to bring in new players and always to come back when the best player leaves and, and joins Bayern or any other team, uh, and that's great to see. Lewandowski challenging, it's Socrates who comes out on top again, much to the delight of the Dortmund fans. Shakiri finds Lewandowski. Muller's awaiting. Oh. Well, Shakiri's come across to take the corner. Gaudino is down with him. Gianluca Gaudino. The son, in case you're wondering, of Maurizio Gaudino, Bundesliga winner with Stuttgart in 1992. Dortmund clear. Wolfman clattered by Sebastian Roder. No love lost between these two sides. Aubameyang's got the pace. Wins the corner. There weren't enough bodies in the box. I think that's what we need when Aubameyang gets there to the byline to get a cross in. We need, they need more bodies in the box. Dortmund certainly have richness in terms of strikers. Adrian Ramos is on the bench this evening. Dong Won Ji isn't the Korean. And it comes from Hoffman. There's the chance, and Neuer has to make the save. Matthias Ginter with the header. Rosewell 
but comfortably enough for Manuel Neuer. I'll talk about pressing. Dortmund have got Bayern pinned right back here. Muller's touch off is a good one for Shakiri. Shakiri may go it alone. He's been forced wide very well. Still manages to dig out the cross. It will be a goal kick though, and that was good defending from Lukas Piszczek. It was, but there was a big hole in midfield, just one long ball. Um, you know, it was enough for Bayern to get in the counter attack because they are pressing. Dortmund is pressing with four or five players, and there's, there's not enough following up, so that's why Bayern got a chance here. But it was a good, uh, good stop from Dortmund, and uh, they got the goal kick now. Pep Guardiola was certainly uh, having his say. Felt that Bayern should have got uh, more bodies forward to help him there, Shakiri. Anyway, Bayern will continue with possession, and they have had a lot of the ball so far. It's no surprise. I guess the key phrase from last season is possession without purpose, but uh, Bayern with Lewandowski up front have always got a purpose. They have, yeah. Anyway, chance for Dortmund, Aubameyang almost, oh, oh, and there's the goal. opening goal! <laughs> Henrik Mkhitaryan! 23 minutes gone, and the home side break the deadlock. The signal Iduna Park erupts. Neuer and Martinez discussing what went wrong, but Dortmund capitalised. Great strike from Mkhitaryan there, he's in a good position to get the second ball, and it's a good finish, and it's one of Dortmund. It was a fine finish, he did really well to react there, because it was under his feet and uh, wanted to get it on that preferred foot. Great run in the first instance and from Mkhitaryan. He started to play, you know, he's driven the ball all the way, and Aubameyang gets the ball and it gets back to Mkhitaryan, it's a great strike from him. Very cool finish, great goal. Well, Henrik Mkhitaryan had a great first season last term for Dortmund. Nine goals in the Bundesliga after arriving from Shakhtar Donetsk, and he's had a brilliant uh, pre-season as well. He's been scoring in almost all the friendlies, so no wonder at all that he's on target again today. A little bit of afters there between Socrates and Robert Lewandowski. As well, that ends well for the old pals. We talked about all the possession that Bayern had. Is that a deserved lead for Dortmund? I would say so. You know, it was a back pass from Martinez, I think, when, when it changed a little bit. But Dortmund then had more possession. I think they had more courage to go forward, to press Bayern. And I'm not saying you could see the goal coming, but I'm not surprised here to, to see Dortmund one up because uh, they've, they've tried more and they're not just defending. Uh, and it, it's good to see. I think it livens the game up a little bit. It's certainly been end-to-end -end so far. This is Immobile. Right idea. Looking to get it in between defence and goalkeeper, but the uh, little alleyway wasn't quite big enough. Dortmund right up again in the faces of the Bayern players. They want to work the ball out slowly, and not getting the opportunity to do so. And Dortmund win it again in midfield, and that's very well worked in the midfield. Aubameyang gets it, has a go himself, and Neuer Good holds strike. on to it. Good strike. I think he's, you know, he's right to have a shot there. Uh, good save by Neuer. He's probably got to test him a little bit more, but it's good for him to, to have a go. Um, and it's another chance for Dortmund here. And Bayern still only with the one shot on goal from Jerdan Shakiri. Other than that, they've been struggling in the final third. Lewandowski has been rather anonymous so far, certainly in terms of getting any shots on goal. But just ask Real Madrid, take your eye off him for a moment and uh, he can punish you. He can, yeah. And uh, we've seen Socrates, he's playing really well against uh, Lewandowski here tonight. And I think he will always have an eye on him. He knows how dangerous he can be. 
Uh, so far, it's uh, Socrates having the better of Lewandowski. Free kick Dortmund's way this time. Pitch check, felled by Shakiri. Certainly not a friendly, is it? It's not a friendly, and, and both managers said it before the game. This is not a friendly. It's about winning a cup here. It's probably the, the easiest way of winning the cup. It's just one game. It's the final straight away, and uh, that's why they want to win it. Wolfman's delivery is a long one. Neuer claims with no real problems. Manuel Neuer, recently crowned German Footballer of the Year. Quite the honour in a year in which Germany have won the World Cup. Shakiri looking for the overlapping run of Good Bernat, point. who heads away. The foul is given. A little push on the shoulder there from Piszczek, and Bayern will get the chance to deliver. But Bernat wants uh, Piszczek to get booked, and I think he's right there, because he's through, and there's, there's a very good chance to put the cross in there. Um, I think the referee should have booked him, but he's getting away with it at the moment. Certainly looks as though he's got an abundance of pace, Juan Bernat. And Shakiri getting ready to deliver again. Martinez and Boateng have come forward from the back, and it's a clever delivery, almost bent it around into that little area where goalkeepers and defenders just don't know what to do, but, but headed away. It's a good clearance. It was a great position to get that ball, otherwise it would have been very, very dangerous. Bernat's throw. Lewandowski can't get it under. Bernat with a second bite of the cherry, and well, the chance was for the centre back Martinez in the middle. He's gone down in a heap. Went for the spectacular. Marcel Schmelzer looks to have hurt himself as well. And they just followed through onto Schmelzer's body. Might have just jarred the knee. Well, let's hope he can play on. They, they certainly don't need them. But I'm surprised to see Martinez up there. He's playing at the back with three at the back in, in the centre. And suddenly he turns up uh, in the opposition, you know, 16 yard, 18 yard box. Well, Pep Guardiola is uh, having a word with Jerdan Shakiri down on the touchline, just passing on further tactics. And the uh, rest of the players using the opportunity to take some water on board. Here we get a look at the goal again. Henrik Mkhitaryan, again, did really well to adjust his footing as it came back at him. It was a bit of a surprise, but he was straight onto it and there was absolutely no stopping it for Neuer. Even the best keeper in the world can't save that one. Well, Javi Martinez is being carried from the field. Let's hope that he's OK to continue. It's not looking too bright at present, but uh, Bayern do have Holger Bardstuber on the bench, and he's played and made his comeback after an awful long time out injured uh, in pre-season. So maybe we'll be seeing him earlier than expected. Dante also, uh, the Brazilian international, is on the bench, and things aren't looking great for Martinez whatsoever. Yeah, you don't want that, you know, even before the season started, uh, someone been out with an injury, Martinez, an important player for Bayern. And let's hope that if he's injured, it's not a serious injury and uh, he will soon be able to play again. Well, Dante is warming up and, of course, the last competitive game he played in, well, the less said about that, the better. Dortmund coming forward. This is Aubameyang. Piszczek in behind. Alaba it is who gets the interception and then Roda just ahead of Oliver Kirsch. Oh, looks like he got a touch. Dante is indeed going to come on. And Javi Martinez makes way. Well, hopefully that's not too serious because he hasn't done too well with injuries, Javi Martinez, since he's been at Bayern. He's had uh, enough pauses due to fitness during his time here, but, uh, well, Dante comes on, and... Thomas, tell me, as a professional, is that 7-1 defeat 
against Germany, the kind of game you can forget and just carry on, or is that going to be with him now it, that he's back in the fold? I think it will be with him for a long time, especially he only came in for that game. He wasn't starting you know, at the World Cup, and that, that was his first game. And such defeat for them is uh, it's really hard to get rid of that, you know, get it out of your mind. But I think he's fortunate too to be able to play for Bayern because then he will soon be back on winning ways. And if he's winning the, the Bundesliga again or the Cup or does well in the Champions League, he might have it a little bit easier to forget about that game. Now it's always important to have a good first touch and uh, he's just had one there. Dante really has been a revelation since he signed for Bayern a couple of seasons ago from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Approaching 30, and joins the team that goes on to win the treble and gets into the Brazilian World Cup squad. He almost felt sorry for him uh, when he did finally appear in Brazil. It was his only appearance in the semi-final. But it ended so bitterly for him. But uh, as you say, Thomas, now he has the chance to put things right. This is a chance for Hoffman. It'll come for Piszczek, who swings wildly at it. It's good play there, good play again, just to finish. It's a missing, but the build-up was very good. And uh, a very good chance here for Dortmund. As I said, they're, they're in the game now, and they're, having, they're the better of the game, better than Bayern. Well, away to our left, Javi Martinez has been put onto a stretcher and is being carried around the pitch and will go down the tunnel. That really does look like bad news for him. He's all strapped up and uh, not what Bayern wanted in their first competitive game of the campaign. Hojbjerg, he's got Muller ahead of him. Too much on it. Lewandowski will chase and Socrates needs to be alert. Maybe that's a little bit of frustration here from Lewandowski because he hasn't been in the game. He's tried hard, but Socrates also tried very hard too to close him down. I think he's got the better off him. And here is Lewandowski committing a foul. It wasn't a bad one, but still there is a little bit of frustration, I think. He really has been marked out of the game so far. We're yet to see the best of him. Javi Martinez, as we mentioned, being taken down the tunnel. And he has the look of resignation on his face that suggests that that could be weeks, if not months, out. I think we should be careful here because, I mean, it, it didn't look too bad to me. But look at his face. So, yeah, it, it seems serious. But we'll hopefully find out soon. Big ice pack on his leg as well. Well, all the best to him. And continue from the back, but Bernat unable to keep in that uh, pass from Manuel Neuer. Dortmund are starting to get a hold on the game somehow. You almost feel that they're the more confident Bayern. Started well, looked composed, but they seem to have had their order destroyed somehow. Exactly, yeah, that's how I see it. I think Dortmund's uh, the better team here now, having more possession. Bayern looked bright at the beginning. But now Dortmund's in, in control, and um, I'm wondering whether, it's, whether we see a second goal, but... Well, that's cleared now, but I think, yeah, Dortmund's on top and they could score the second. Uh, would do them good for the game. Also be, be good to see, because Bayern needs to step up a gear. Neuer out for Bernat. Gaudino gives it back to Bernat. Now Shakiri. There's a lot of space on the far side for Pierre-Emile Hoiberg, the young Dane. A player who came in uh, last season for Bayern, played a few games and certainly has the potential. Denmark's young player of the year. Dortmund again winning through in midfield. Brought out by Socrates. This is a purposeful run. Immobile is ahead of him. Oh, and Neuer. Well, they call him the sweeper-keeper, don't they? <laughs> they do, and I think he's done a great job for Germany because the, the team had a high line. There was so much space behind the back four, and that's why we call him the, the, the sweeper there. But Bayern's playing a little bit deeper here tonight. I think he doesn't need to do so much work tonight. Do you think that is the modern goalkeeper having to come out and actually be a part of the defence? Because Manuel Neuer just seems so comfortable when he is on the ball. Yeah, well, if you have him in goal, of course, you can play a high line. It's always easier to put teams under pressure if you can play a high line. And with him in goal, you can certainly do that. So the national team does it. Bayern doesn't do so much tonight, but maybe they will change that. A 
Rare touch for Mitch Langerak. Actually made his Bundesliga debut, Mitch Langerak, against Bayern in 2011 at the Allianz Arena, and Dortmund ran out 3-1 winners. Now this time on Chiro Immobile. Having watched him, and the clips that you get online of Chiro Immobile does seem like a very good finisher. One criticism is that perhaps he gets caught offside a little too often, but uh, certainly a proven goal scorer. He's done it in one of the top leagues. And uh, a real good signing there on the bench. Mats Hummels, Marco Royce and Ilkay Gundogan, just a selection of the players that Dortmund are missing, and they really do and will add quality when they return. Yeah, I thought Bayern looked a little bit better on paper, but then now, uh, you know, I've got to change that because we're well, not changing because they're still good on paper, but Dortmund is they're still very good and they have a good squad. That's the difference now. They don't just have good 10 or 11 players. They have 15 or 16 top-class players. And when they come back, they're going to challenge Bayern for a long time. And Dortmund certainly putting the pressure on at the moment. It was Kale who made that marauding run into the box a few moments ago. Might come through here for Aubameyang, Dante, and now Boateng. Nicely dealt with. Have been question marks over Boateng, but uh, he really has matured over the past season, certainly into a player who isn't as rash as before. Muller. Had a quiet game, Thomas Muller. Uh, you know, I think it, it, it's understandable coming back from the World Cup, but um, he, he, he still tries, and you can never write him off, even though he's having a quiet game so far. You, he can always score, as I said, with his runs. The runs that he makes are just so brilliant that you take your eye off him, he'll be there, and he'll score, or set someone up. So don't underestimate him with the start he's had. And in German, they call him the Raumdeuter, which is, if you translate it, the space interpreter. Make of that what you will. Yeah, well, that's a great compliment. And as I said, you know, the, the players that I played with and uh, even abroad, they said Thomas Muller, he's, he's just so special with the runs that he makes. Uh, he's not technically the greatest player or natural goal scorer, but he scores an awful lot of goals. Uh, and he certainly knows where the ball is going. And that's why he scores so many goals. Well, Bayern were in the US, weren't they, uh, for a tour in New York? And they played against an MLS Select 11. And Thierry Henry said after that that Thomas Muller is modern football. That's uh, that's the way things are going. It's true, yeah. And he's only popped up about three or four years ago, and, and it's a big surprise. But he's got the intelligence. Dante almost slipping there. Yeah, he's, he's got the intelligence, and that's what's so important nowadays in football. You've got to think where the ball is going, and uh, and that's what he does at, at, at best, really. I mean, uh, I, I don't any other I don't know any other player who does it as well as he does. Aubameyang, this is Kale, just about helps it on, and Aubameyang will get hold of it, he's got the gas to get around Alaba, and that will go for a corner. Well, Immobile gets in the box, which is great, but he's the only one. I think they need more bodies in the box when Aubameyang gets the ball, when he gets to the byline and crosses it, they need more than just Immobile in the box. But he does well there to get there. Other than that, I think he's still trying to find his feet and get hold of the game. But his, his teammates, they, they also work hard. But just that final third, they have to get into the box and, and score. Marcel Schmelzer has come across from left back to take the corner. for Kale there, Neuer had to react. Bayern immediately breaking. Royberg muscled off it, he does win the free kick though. Well, Kale really leathered the ball when it came down to him. Under pressure, Neuer lucky, it was straight at him. Good strike, though, from Kiel.
Lewandowski impeding Kirsch. Oliver Kirsch. It just seems like a fairy tale. You know, he was at Kaiserslautern a couple of years ago, joined Dortmund. Suddenly we see him last season thrown into the Champions League semi-final against Real Madrid. Uh, sorry, the quarter-final it was, wasn't it? The second leg of the quarter-final. And he was absolutely superb. And ever since, he's just been playing with confidence and slots into this world-class team as if uh, he'd never been away. I, I think that's what you see with Jurgen Klopp. He actually improves the players. If they go there uh, and he gives them confidence. He knows they've got the quality to play for Dortmund. But then adding that confidence and playing at the highest level. You he, he said he's played for Kaiserslautern then. Uh, a little later, he plays in the Champions League quarterfinal against one of the best teams in the world, and he does well. You know, he's, he's got the confidence to, to perform there. Uh, just a great, great story there. And of course, the key point as well, he's 31. So this development has all happened fairly late in his career. Wow. Epitome of a late bloomer, really. Yeah, similar with Dante. He's, you know, he's only late in his career that he's, he's peaked and now he's playing for Bayern. He's won the treble and he's, he's a little bit, yeah, fairly old for a football player, but he's never given up. Just check up the line and then Kirsch on. Bamiyang chases. Will get there ahead of Dante. And Hoffman. Again, beaten out by Neuer. Kale. And again. Dortmund really on top of it now. Another couple of really good strikes in, in similar positions that we had before. But as I said with Neuer, you've got to do a little bit better than that. But they're having a shot at goal. That's what you need to do. Test the keeper and eventually we'll go in again. Dortmund have been peppering Manuel Neuer's goal in the past few minutes. As you say, Thomas, really taking control of proceedings. Bayern trying to be patient. But it's the harrying of Dortmund which is paying dividends. Here's Shakiri wide for Juan Bernat. Kale, calm under pressure. Nice turn from Roder. Doesn't fancy the shot himself, and that may have cost him because Dortmund have come away with it. Hoffman. Mkhitaryan brought down and gets the free kick. The goal scorer. And it's a yellow card as well for... It looks like Pierre-Emile Hoybjerg it was with the foul. There wasn't too much contact, but uh, Mkhitaryan entitled to go down there, I think. Well, you see the difference there. Just early on, we had two players closing uh, down, getting the ball, starting the counter-attack, and there you've got the, the tackle from Hoiberg, and he gets booked and a, and a free kick for, for Dortmund. So Dortmund did really well to get the ball back, and now they've got a free kick at the other end. Right on the stroke of half-time. And Bamiyang is sizing this one up for a shot, and he can hit them from here. He does, but it's no trouble for Neuer. Maybe a little bit too much confidence uh, from Aubameyang there. I don't know whether he's practiced it in training, but I haven't seen him done it before. Who knows? Maybe we'll see it this season. Just a minute of added time at the end of the first half. Maybe Dortmund can make Bayern pay right at the end of it. Comes again for Kirsch. Another let off for the reigning Bundesliga title holders. Lack of communication, but I think great again from Immobile. He moves uh, ever so well. He's in good positions. He makes space and us for the ball. So it's very good from him. Victorian sounds over again, but it's all positive from Dortmund. It's all got a purpose. Is it a case of trying to reintroduce that composure and calmness for Bayern again for Pep Guardiola at half time? I think it is, yeah. It's not about the players so much, but um, he certainly will have a good team talk with them. Well, it is half-time, and Borussia Dortmund lead by a goal to nil in the German Super Cup 2014. 
Henrik Mikitarian with it after 23 minutes. A bit of a mix-up in the Bayern defence and Thomas. Well, Bayern started so well, they were looking composed, they had plenty of possession, but Dortmund have been getting up in their faces, stopping them play, and in the end, it's unsettled Bayern, and they've actually finished the half a lot stronger. Yes, I think it's a fair result. Dortmund, a much better team in the second half of the first half, and Bayern started better, but Dortmund had a lot of chances, a lot of shots on goal, and that's why I think they deserve to be 1-0 up. Uh, be interested to see what Guardiola changes at half-time and the team that we see with the, the approach that they have to the second half. Well, it is a game that uh, Pep Guardiola wants to win at all costs, certainly to lay down a marker against Dortmund. Do you think we could see a few more of the star names coming off the bench? We've already seen Dante come in, of course, for the injured Javi Martinez. But... I think with the injury of uh, Martinez, Guardiola is probably not taking too much of a risk. If he's bringing on another player who isn't fully fit and risk another injury, I think he wants to avoid that. Of course, he, he, he does. Uh, and he will probably say, well, if you don't win this here tonight, at least I don't have another in injured players. That's how the game plays. Uh, the Bundesliga is more important. But it'd be nice to see, uh, you know, Alarm coming on. Maybe Mario got get to, uh, again, have some atmosphere here when he comes on. Well, we're just getting a look at some of the highlights from the first half and almost exclusively for Dortmund so far. Here's the goal again from Henrik Mikitarian. And that's the one that separates the two sides at the interval. 1-0 it is for Borussia Dortmund against Bayern München. And we'll be back for the second half in around about 15 minutes' time, so make sure you join us. Welcome back to the Signal Iduna Park in Dortmund, where the host Borussia Dortmund are currently on course to defend their Super Cup title. They lead Bayern München by a goal to nil. Henrik Mikitarian with it in the 23rd minute. And to be honest, Thomas Hitzelsberger, who sat alongside me here, we reckon it's probably a deserved lead based on the first half. It is a deserved lead. We said Bayern got better into the game the first 15 minutes. They played really well. But then, uh, you know, Dortmund came back and had more possession and had a lot of shots on goal and, and deserved to be 1-0 up. Well, we're going to see a couple of changes for the second period. Philipp Lahm is just getting ready to come on, Germany's World Cup winning captain. And Eric Durm as well, who'd already made his way onto the pitch, has had to come back off so that the fourth official can, in fact... Uh, Allow him to come on, and uh, Thomas Muller has been withdrawn for Lahm. No great surprise. It was a surprise in itself to see Muller in the starting lineup in the first place. Yes, it was, and I think they talked about it before the game that each of them will play 45 minutes to get back into it. Philip Lahm, he plays in midfield again uh, because there was a big debate whether he should play in midfield for Germany. He ended up uh, as a right back, but for Bayern, he does a great job in midfield, and he certainly enjoys it there. Well, the other change is Eric Durm on for Marcel Schmelzer at left-back for Dortmund, and that really was one of the big surprises for me ahead of the World Cup, that Eric Durm travelled with the Germany squad and Schmelzer didn't. Now, watching from the outside, that cannot be good for confidence at domestic level if the player who's behind you in the pecking order at club level suddenly jumps ahead of you on the international stage as well. Chance on here. Well, an early one right at the beginning of the second period, and Lewandowski could easily have levelled things there for Bayern, but a good save by Langerak. I think there was an offside flag by the looks of it, in fact. But Thomas, uh, going back to uh, Eric Durm and Marcel Schmelzer, what kind of uh, an impact do you think that will have had on Schmelzer? Yeah, I think for Schmelzer, he didn't really have a great career in the national team. He's a very good player, and I think Jogi Lovi gave him 
uh, some opportunities, but he wasn't overly happy with his performances. Nevertheless, he's a very good player. And I think Jorge Löw saw more in, in Eric Dom than he saw in Schmelzer. And that's why he made that decision. But uh, Jürgen Klopp, you know, he, he has both of them. I think he rates them both. And he's got a good option there. He's got two very good options. And that's why he can uh, swap them around. Well, you can see on your screens that Mario Götze, the scorer of the winning goal in the World Cup final, is warming up in the tunnel. Well, what I does think, that tell us? Well, I think he wants to avoid warming up in front of the, the uh, Gelbe Vans. I think that's what he doesn't want to do because he will get a lot of abuse if he does that. So he's been told probably to warm up in the tunnel. Very interesting, but uh, it's probably a good decision because who wants to do that? Run in front of the, the fans that they really sort of loathe you and say, uh, um, probably throw things at him. We don't want to see that here tonight. Absolutely not. Well, he did the same back in November upon his first return to Dortmund and promptly came on and silenced the entire home crowd by scoring the opening goal. Koyberg not quite tall enough to reach that driven pass from Dante. I'm sure Götze wouldn't mind doing the same here tonight, coming on and scoring. And that's why he's getting not just physically ready, but also mentally in the tunnel. Um, so we'll see what he does when he comes on. Mkhitaryan falls for Hoffman. Durm. Well, Eric Durm was a player I watched a lot last season and he made his breakthrough in the Champions League against Marseille and it has to be said whether Schmelz is in the way for a first team spot or not he's a wonderful left back and the next on the production line really for Germany Dortmund coming forward with Piszczek Obamio. Something you mentioned a lot in the first half, Thomas, was the fact that Dortmund were getting into some good crossing positions, but it was only Immobile in there. Do you think it's uh, a good reason to bring someone like Adrian Ramos on from the bench just to add a little bit of weight to that attack? I think so, yeah, but it's not just the strikers, also the, the midfield players that have to go up there, you know, get into the box. Uh, it, it's about making that effort, uh, thinking that you, you'd be the one that gets the ball. First of all, the, the cross has to be right, uh, so I think Aubameyang has to work on his cross. But it looks to me as if Bayern now spotted that, you know, there'll be less space out on, the, on their left, uh, so Aubameyang doesn't get enough of the ball. Wolfman's corner is cleared, only as far as Mkhitaryan. Not the first one he's stuck into the crowd today, but uh, Mkhitaryan is the scorer of the goal that separates the two sides. Pep Guardiola looks on, won't be too impressed with the performance so far. Of course, uh, several players missing for him today. He was saying before the game that he only had eight or nine who were really capable of playing the 90 minutes. Philip Lahm isn't one of them. He's come on for the second period. The Bayern captain taking over from Manuel Neuer, by the way, at half-time. It's well done by Shakiri. Still, he holds on to it and wins a free kick as well. I've got to say, he looks, he looks very good to me tonight. I think he's had a, had a good first half. Unlike his, his teammates, he's quite lively, he wants the ball, you know, he wants to get past players and create something. And there he gets the, the free kick in a good position. So I think Shakiri's having a good game here. It's a make or break season for him, it feels like. There's always discussions about him leaving, but if he can really make an impact, then, uh, you know, Robin and Ribéry aren't getting any younger. Eventually, he's got to make the breakthrough. Well, it'd be, yeah, it'd be great for him, but he's so unfortunate to have those two in front of him. Shakiri's cross in. We'll get a second bite at the cherry now. This time there isn't a free kick. Well, historically, both these clubs, Dortmund and Bayern, have won four Super Cups apiece, so if Dortmund do hang on, then... Uh, it will be a record fifth title. Bayern obviously can do the same. They're going to need to score at least twice. If they score once, we won't have extra time at the end of the game. We'll go straight to a penalty shootout.
Glorious weather in Dortmund. Sun just dipping under the stand opposite us. It's right in our eyes, actually. We're having to uh, watch the game with our hands over our brows. But it really is great weather for football. Eric Durham. Immobile wanted it earlier. It'll come instead for Hoffman. And Bamiyang slip costs him the ball. As Bernat came away with it. Good play from Kaylee. It is a good position to get the ball back and uh, start another attack for Dortmund. Uh, it's quite clever from him, but he's got the experience. You almost expect that from him. Robert Lewandowski. Not much in the way of support. He seemed to give up there and just toe poke the ball away. Here's Mikitaria. Immobile. Up against Boateng, who's watching him closely. Mikitarian didn't quite get the power in the shot, nor the accuracy. Durham will get the chance to cross. Alarm there to cover. Still Dorman to go in with Durham. And the poke, well held by Manuel Neuer. Manuel Neuer by the way, seems to have got off pretty lightly so far. He was saying that uh, it wouldn't be quite the same if he came to Dortmund and get, didn't get jeered due to his Schalke background. Now, Schalke have possibly a bigger rivalry, in fact, definitely a bigger rivalry than Dortmund and Bayern, historically speaking. It's only up the road. But uh, no jeers for Neuer today as the strike comes in from Immobile. Yeah, well, he said it, it does motivate him when he, when he comes here and people boo him. So maybe the fans have been reading it and saying, we keep quiet, we don't want to give him an extra motivation to, to play well here. Uh, but they certainly won't be quiet when Mario Götze comes on and they weren't quiet with Lewandowski being on the ball. Uh, but it worked with Lewandowski because still he's not really in the game and he looks a bit unhappy up there on his own uh, and he needs support. Oh. Well, he might well, there he is, brings the ball down well, as he normally does. Almost worked out for him, the slip from Ginter. I don't think he realised that had happened. No, no. Been away. Because he does it ever so well with a, with a back to the goal, you know, brings the ball down and then he needs support and he needs to play the ball to the, uh, to the left or to the right and get again in, in a good position. Wolfman's ball for Aubameyang. Screaming for it over on the far side is Immobile, but Bernat is with him and it's he who clears away with the head. Socrates. Over Kirsch. A oh, bit of a wayward cross that. So Bamiyang just about managing to keep it in. And the officials in the end deciding otherwise. Dortmund's in control again. The, the only problem is, is the crosses. They, they need better quality on the crosses from the right and from the left. Uh, Aubameyang getting on the ball, but it, he needs to sort of improve from that. If he gets the ball in the box, there's more chances for them to score. Um, so I think that's something that he needs to focus on in the next few weeks. It's piss check. Roda with the block. You see players like Roda, and perhaps to even more extent, someone like Pepe Reina signing for Bayern. In your opinion, Thomas, is it worth going to a big club knowing that you're unlikely to play? You might get the odd uh, appearance here and there, but really you're relying on injuries just to pick up the silverware without playing. Is that the same buzz? Uh, no, it, it isn't. I was, I was especially surprised with Reina moving to Bayern because, you know, he's, he's only 31, I think, and uh, moved to such a big club with such a quality, knowing that Neuer's there. Aubameyang. Boateng. Oh, well done, Boateng. Yeah, coming back to Reina, I think I was very surprised to see him join Bayern, but clearly Bayern, they want to be... 
you know, they want to have a great squad, not just have the, the 12, 13 players. And they, you look at the, the team photo they've just done, the, the squad is just immense. And, and uh, you have players that have won the World Cup and either even sitting on the bench. And um, interesting move from Reiner there. I don't know why, whether he's just happy or he thinks or sitting on the bench and, and picking up trophies or whether he wants to challenge Neuer, which would be quite, you know, quite optimistic. But for Zerastin Rode, I think it's more a learning curve. If he gets more, more games in, more than 10, 15 games, it'd be, be a, a bonus for him. But I don't think he's expected to play every game, of course not. And if he can learn playing with the best players, then maybe he can one day get into their, into their positions or move to another very good club. Offside called there against Robert Lewandowski. Bayern getting ready to bring on Mario Götze. Christian Seifert there, the CEO of the DFL, Deutsche Fußball Liga, German Football League, sat next to Dr. Reinhard Raubal, the president of the League Association, and also the president of Borussia Dortmund. Philipp Lahm. Surely the Dortmund fans can't begrudge Philipp Lahm, can they? He's the man who lifted the trophy for Germany. No, but I think the Bayern fans, they want to see Mario Götze and uh, Dortmund. They just want to make sure they don't care. It's all about Dortmund now. They don't want to see him. But I think Bayern, they do, because uh, he's not just been great for, for Germany. He's, he's also had a fairly good season for Bayern, but there's still space for improvement for him. Well, Götze is taking a seat back on the bench because play just wasn't stopping. It'll be on soon enough, though. Dortmund. Aubameyang didn't know that one was for him. Bayern could certainly do with a player of Götze's creativity in behind Lewandowski just to get in between the lines and start picking holes in that Dortmund defence because it's something that so far just hasn't happened. shakiri has been doing his best, but uh, Lewandowski, very, very quiet so far. Yes, he needs someone to pass the ball to him, and there we see Mario Götze coming on. And we hear him. Well, we hear not him, we hear the fans and what they think of him. You can certainly hear the reaction. In case anybody in Dortmund needed reminding, Mario Götze has just entered the fray against his former club, the club he left ahead of last season. Interestingly, Mario Götze, his family is actually from Bayern, they're from the Algoy region which is uh, down there towards the Alps. And uh, Robert Lewandowski probably had, you know, maybe less reason to, to, to go back there than, than Goethe. His brother lived down there, he said. He said it was the right move for him in terms of the family. But the how, you how often is... will he see his family? I don't think that's the, that's the main reason. It's just, you know, pretty straightforward, going to the best club in Germany. A chance for Mabile. Couldn't pick out a colleague in the centre, nor find the finish. And he was offside as well. Mkhitaryan has stayed down there. There's a flag, as you say, Thomas. We've already had one injury, which ended Javi Martinez's game. Let's hope that uh, Mkhitaryan's OK. Challenge was from Lahm. Ooh, and it was a nasty one. It was indeed, yeah, you don't, we don't see that very often from him, but um, it was a nasty challenge. Yeah, Klopp certainly saw it. Well done from Eric Durham again, he spotted the ball and he got right in between and picked it up. You can see the possession there, 56% for Bayern, but look at the shots. 17 for Dortmund, 3 for Bayern. Possession without purpose, is it rearing its ugly head once again? Again, yeah, I'm surprised to see that in the first game, but it seems to be true, of course. Uh, and, and we have to wait and see whether Bayern learn their lesson from it. Uh, it's, it's only early stages, but... Oh, it's a Dortmund great double their lead. <laughs> and it's Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with the simplest of headers. 
better, I think, if he's in the box and it's at the end of it rather than crossing the ball for someone else. It's a great finish from him and a great ball in. He just seemed to be able to hang in the air. He had so much time to pick his spot there. Looping cross. And Pierre-Emerick. Aubameyang pulls out the Spider-Man mask. Well, it's a rarity, only for special occasions, the mask from Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. But the marking just wasn't there. Boateng saw him too late, didn't he? He did, yeah, but he set himself up there, Aubameyang. He passes the ball wide, goes in the box. Great leap from him, and it's a great header. Well-deserved goal, but I'm not so sure about the mask. <laughs> well, Aubameyang bows out on a high, doubling Dortmund's lead, and it's Adrian Ramos, Colombian World Cup striker, signed from Hertha Berlin over the summer. 16 goals in the Bundesliga last season, and he joins Chiro Immobile up front. Well, the Dortmund fans are right in the mood now at the Signal Iduna Park. Two goals to the good, and they are singing. At the top of their voices, the yellow wall is rocking. Here they come again. Mobile muscled off it by Boateng. And a space for Mario Götze, Lewandowski. Two former Dortmund players combining for Bayern. To no avail this time. Piszczek is down. Looks as though he might be winded. It, I can imagine it takes it out of you when Boateng runs into you. Big fella. It's right in front of Jurgen Klopp, and you know, he, as we know him, doesn't like to see that. He makes it clear. He's had a word with the referee. Uh, because clearly, like Guardiola, he doesn't want an injured player here in this game tonight. Here's Eric Durham, by the way, uh, who's been floored, not uh, Piszczek. It was Piszczek, though, who provided the cross for the goal, and there again we see a great leap from Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, and he's steered it past Manuel Neuer, a real striker's goal, and we were saying earlier in the first half whether he might uh, come in field, and he's just done that and scored. Hidden in his socks as well. Mkhitaryan brought to ground. Peter Gagelmann, one of Germany's most respected referees. Doing a good job so far, Thomas, I'd say. Yeah, I think he's had a good game. Um, you know, no great interferences, and it's always a great compliment when you say you don't want to mention the referee because he hasn't made any mistakes. So, uh, good game by the referee, and let's hope it continues like that. No feedback is good feedback. Exactly, and, and you know, we've talked about referees so much in the World Cup, we certainly don't want to do that tonight, and there's absolutely no reason to do that now. Wolfman. Other than say he's had a good game. And the belay. Not quite able to find the pass. Well, we're approaching the midway stage in the second period, and the game has taken a similar pattern to the first half. Dortmund, you have to say, have kept the intensity. Bayern just haven't managed to find their stride, have they? No, they look a bit flat to me. Whether they just don't want it enough might be the reason. And, as, you know, uh, with the injury of Martinez, they, they're more worried about their bodies. Could be one reason, but... Um, Dortmund's clearly on top, and they look, they look more like scoring a third goal than, than Bayern scoring th their first. Immobile trying to get behind, Neuer wise to the danger. Dante. Lam brought it forward, and now it'll be spread 
Across to Sebastian Roda. Gardino gives chase. Sebastian Kale, 34 years of age now, player of great experience. Well, it might come for Shakiri here. Challenge though from Ramos and Dortmund can break. They haven't got the numbers. Now it's Ramos. Well, he's fast, but uh, not fast enough to beat Alaba, who had a 20 yard head start. Good, sir. Good ball wide. Lewandowski. And Dortmund again read the situation. And they have an embarrassment of riches at centre back, don't they? Let's not forget that Mats Hummels is still due to return, who will take over as captain, and Nevin Sabotic as well. There's going to be a real fight for places in that Dortmund defence this year. Well, that's good to have that competition. That's what every, every manager wants. And we see them here tonight doing really well against Lewandowski in particular. So if they get these two players back, and uh, then it's looking pretty good for them. Dumbs throw up to Immobile. Shakiri. That's a very good ball, almost for Lewandowski. It's not been his night, though, has it so far? You don't wonder whether maybe throwing Claudio Pizarro on for last 20 minutes or so might make a, a difference for Bayern? Um, I don't know whether he can make the difference just by himself. I think the entire team needs to liven up a little bit, but Lewandowski's just not been his night. And I wouldn't be surprised if he comes off. And yeah, probably uh, uh, Claudio Pizarro coming on. Uh, I could see that happening. Shakiri, Lewandowski off. was offside. Off. No doubts about that one. Well, only joined in the summer and seems to have slotted in well, certainly in terms of the squad. But today it just hasn't worked out for him. Instead, it's Dortmund who lead 2 0. Matthias Sammer. Well, he's a man you don't want to cross at Bayern München. Not really. He's even angry when the team's winning and is playing well. I think that's his role at Bayern. But credit to him. Since he's been there, the team has been very successful. I think he's, he's done good work. Uh, but he also knows Dortmund very well, having been the manager of the team for a few years. Well, it has been said sometimes that maybe the critic, uh, the uh, criticism was too strong from Matthias Sammer at times, that he was going over the top, but there's no arguing with it. Bayern have been winning. They've ruled the roost domestically since he's arrived and, of course, uh, won the Champions League as well in 2013. And he just seems to be the guy who's pushing them that little bit further. There is that argument, but when you know what he was like when he was a player, he, he always wants that extra bit. He's not happy with second best, certainly not. And he drives the players on, I think. You know, that's the mentality of Bayern Munich, and he certainly has that in him. In him. And that's what Bayern is always looking for, players and, and, and staff that want to make a difference, who don't settle for second best. Alaba trying to go all the way back to Noah. Dante helping it on. And now we do see the sweeper-keeper run out of his box. Gaudino to Gutzer, and now Lewandowski on to Roda. Good ball from Lahm. Well, it's symptomatic. There's no challenge there from Bayern. You know, the ball's up in the air for quite a long time. No one's going there to, to, to get the ball. Uh, sums them up a little bit for me. Very disappointing. Um, Dortmund's really at it. They are looking good for their lead at 2-0. Bayern have not threatened so far in the second period. Dortmund it is who lead, thanks to goals from Mkhitaryan in the first half and Aubameyang in the second. Lewandowski caught offside again. 
But Guardiola nonetheless applauding the pass. Well, Pep Guardiola has said he won't be buying any more players in this summer transfer window. I think Bayern have got a squad capable of uh, another assault on the Champions League. Certainly, yeah. We talked about it earlier. The squad that they have is just phenomenal. Uh, of course, there's this, you know, few players out there who, who are probably a little bit better than what Bayern got in terms of strikers. You look at Bale, Benzema, Ronaldo. But overall, Bayern have got no complaints. They've got a great squad. Another yellow card there. Gerard Boateng receives it. Well, it's Kirsch who's gone down. Let's just take another look. And it was a heavy challenge from the Bayern and Germany defender. Did mention in the first half that uh, Boateng has more or less eliminated that rash side of his game. He is a lot more composed. He was always a player who had obviously the physical presence, the athleticism, but it was just those moments of concentration which eluded him and often led to real problems for Bayern and other teams that he's played for, Manchester City, of course, as well. But, I mean, on the whole, contradicting what's just happened, uh, well, he's yeah. turned into a very composed defender. And we see some aggression here uh, from him. Uh, I think that the World Cup must have given him a lift. Um, and he's been criticised over the last couple of years in Bayern. And he wants to prove a point there. And, and he has improved his game, so that's, that's, that's very good. But I think the national team has helped him getting that confidence back. Immediately booted upfield it was by Noah looking for Mario Gutzer. Bit hopeful, if anything, though, from FC Bayern. Ramos rising. Lahm. Shakiri wide for Bernat. That's a good ball in for Shakiri. Now the chance could be on. Shakiri almost ghosting his way into the box, but again, the challenge comes from the Dortmund defender and just not enough to suggest that any locks can be picked back there in the Schwarzgelden, the black yellow back line. Oliver Kirsch has hobbled back onto the field after that clattering from Boateng. And here he is. Socrates away. Up to Ramos. Oh, Bernat slipping. He's got to be careful here. He's being watched very closely by Ramos. Deals with the situation well. We talked about him at half-time, Thomas Juan Bernat. Seems to be comfortable going forward but the chemistry just hasn't quite been there between Alaba and him yeah it might also be the position you know having three at the back and I think he's more used to playing with, with four at the back and him as a left back but uh, it, it might take a little while for him to to adapt to you know to the team to settle in in Munich and in the Bundesliga it's always a different style of play so we shouldn't criticize him in his first game here competitive match um, I'm not worried because he's got the, the ability we've seen that tonight it's not been his best game, of course not. Um, and I think there's a lot more to see from him. Uh, I'm not worried at all. Almost finding Immobile there, the pass forward. But now I think he will have, you know, if, if he plays, he will have uh, Robin or Ribéry in front of him. That's always a different game than that you, you can play there because you've got someone going forward who's so strong and he's got all the ability um, and then he might you know just support him rather than doing all the work now going forward and backwards. Dortmund with the chance to break it's on by McTarran it does really well to get the ball to Immobile who's in now Giro Immobile for Dortmund went for the poke finish easy enough for Neuer but he showed a turn of pace there Immobile with the ball down in the centre is Mkhitaryan, not for the first time in this game, clutching his ankle. He did ever so well to get the ball to Immobile, but the challenge was late.
Well, that's poor defending here from uh, Jerome Boateng. We, we said how how much he's improved, but this one, clearly, it was bad defending. It just stands there, it doesn't really move. Um, very easy, very mobile, but it's a great move from him, but not so good of a finish. We've talked about the crowd here today at the Signal Iduna Park. Completely sold out. I'm told the official attendance is 80,667. At least uh, that's the info we have at the moment. Uh, Germany does so much right in terms of the whole stadium experience. I mean, walking into the ground, you could see fans here a good, you know, three and a half hours before kickoff, which is when I arrived, and you could see them enjoying a bratwurst and a beer together. They all come in, and, and the atmosphere has been superb. I think uh, it's really something to savour when you're over here. Yes, it is. It's a very good experience. And I, I talk to a lot of people from, from abroad when they come here and watch a football match, they say how much they enjoy it. It's cheaper than in most other countries to go watch a match and the atmosphere is great. You come to this place, certainly it is always sold out. But so many other stadiums in Germany, it's, it's great to be, be here at this moment of time because German football is... Mistake by Dante, Immobile. Well, the option was there for the pass. He should have passed it, yeah, he should have squared it to Hoffmann. But I think he really wants to score in his first game here in Dortmund. Uh, this, you know, Super Cup match, he wants to be in the score sheet. And that's why he didn't look over to the other side. Well, Hoffmann wasn't too happy. Anyway, Bayern come forward with Gaudino. I think looking for Mario Götze. And, of course, the Bundesliga isn't just about these two, is it? You've got Bayern and Dortmund, they're the, the powerhouses. But uh, you look at the likes of Schalke and Leverkusen, but also Wolfsburg this season. Side two are certainly capable of mounting a challenge as well. It's ultra-competitive. Yes, I agree with you, but uh, funny enough, uh, Jose Mourinho, he said a couple of weeks ago that the Bundesliga is not interested. Oh, another chance for McTarran here. Well, he's bent it wide. Good effort, though, still. See what he was trying to do there? Yeah, yeah, it was a good effort for him. Um, maybe he's getting a little bit tired here now. If he had done that in the first half, it would have gone in, maybe. Um, but he's had a very good game. I, I think McTaren's one of the best players here tonight. So going back to Jose Mourinho, who said the Bundesliga's only got those two, two teams and the rest are, you know, way behind them. I, I would disagree. You have Wolfsburg, you've got Leverkusen, you've got so many other teams who are strong, who are getting stronger each year. Uh, and hopefully some of them can challenge Bayern and Dortmund this season and um, give them a really good, good test. Well, news is filtering through to us that uh, Javi Martinez is going to need an MRI scan tomorrow and it could be torn ligaments, so Doesn't we sort of look at his face and that seems to confirm yeah. the bad news. Yeah, he probably knew himself, um, so that's very bad news for, for Bayern, for him personally. Lewandowski brought to ground. Bayern with a free kick in a good position. Maybe a little bit far out for the strike, but David Alaba, he likes to sort of emulate that Cristiano Ronaldo technique of striking straight through the ball, and uh, we've seen them, him uh, stick them in from here. Yes, I think he's got a very good strike. Um, see what he can, can do. Also Shakiri, both, you know, lining up now. Um, and I think they do better than Ovo Young did in the first half. Let's see what happens. It is Alaba. Oh, well, and a good save by Langerak. Had to turn that one around the post. It looked like it was on target. Good strike on target. That's what you want. You know, make the keeper work for it. It's good effort. Shakiri and Gaudino team up for the corner. There's Shakiri. Away by Kirsch. And again, Dortmund break. Durham has got the legs, he's pulled back unceremoniously by Philip Lahm and that was cynical from the Bayern and Germany captain and you can't argue with the yellow card there, can you? No, we've seen a challenge from him earlier on and now he's, he's pulling the shirt. Very unusual, very unlike Philip Lahm, but we forgive him. Uh, he's, had a, he's just come back from a three-week break and we will see a different Philip Lahm in a few, a few weeks' time. 
Well, there was talk of them all making friends, the Bayern and Dortmund players in the Germany squad in the camp at the World Cup, but uh, as soon as they're on the pitch, friendships are on hold, right? They are certainly, and they've they've said it before the game, and it's just that's the, that's the case. That's professional football. You are friends when the game's over, but as soon as it's on, you want to win. You want to get the best for your team. It'll be like taking on Roda and Boateng. Roda just about gets the challenge in and wins the foul himself. Immobile works very hard. He's, he's, he knows what Jürgen Klopp wants. Uh, unfortunately, he hasn't scored tonight, but um, he's, he's very good for the squad because he helps everyone out by running so much, closing people down. Um, it's, for me, it's, it's a good debut here in the Signal Duna Arena in, in the Super Cup for him. We're seeing the statistics on the screen there. 55% of tackles won for Dortmund. Is that rustiness from the World Cup on Bayern's part, or is that Dortmund with more hunger? Yeah, it looks like um, they've got more hunger. Um, and not just because they've played home, of course, it's always a, an advantage. But Bayern, apart from the first 15 minutes in the first half, they've been disappointing, and Dortmund looked like they wanted it much more. Sven Bender looks as though he may be entering the fray any moment. You'd assume Oliver Kirsch would be the direct replacement. Sebastian Kell, the captain, you'd imagine would stay on for the remainder now. Just a case of getting as many players as possible up to match fitness, I suppose, now. Yes, and Ben then particularly, he missed out on the, on the World Cup. Very disappointing for him. So he'll be so happy when the season starts and all come on here tonight and get a taste of it again. Competitive football at the, at the best. He'll be so happy to be there now. Bayern look to have run out of puff. They could certainly do with uh, some fresh legs in the forward department. It's all very pedestrian at the moment. If not hopeful, like that pass from Dante. Here comes the substitution. It is Kish who's making way. And Sven Bender, who, as you say, Thomas has been extremely unlucky with injuries, will be hoping that he can make a real go of it this term in the Bundesliga and, of course, in Europe. Applause for Kirsch, who's held his own against one of the best sides in Europe once again. Good performance by Oliver Kirsch here. We'll see a lot more of him in the next weeks and months. It's, uh, yeah, it just shows that the, the depth of the squad Jürgen Klopp has available, very promising. Well, Sven Bender will certainly shore things up in the Dortmund midfield. He's a player with bags of energy. So it's hard to imagine Bayern overrunning Dortmund in any way in these final five and a half minutes or so. Boateng's ball through for Lewandowski. Gaudino. Roder back to Gaudino. He was a player, Thomas, who we spoke about before the game. Obviously, we don't know too much about him other than he's Mauricio Gaudino's son. How have you been impressed by him today? I think it's not very easy for, for the young kid to come in and run the show there. I think he's done well enough to, to, you know, to hold his position in midfield. He tried, um, not his best game, but as I said, he's been let down a little bit by his teammates because it's not down to him to dictate the game. Lewandowski, you know, wasn't at his best, as we said earlier, and also he's been let down a little bit, unfortunately. But you can see the talent. He's, he's very gifted on the ball, um, but I think there's more to come also from him. Uh, if, if he doesn't, then of course he's got so many other players who will step up. It'll be tough for him to get into the team, but um, it's good to get, a, get that run out here in Dortmund. It will stick with him for a while, I'm sure. Gutz's foul. This stadium is the biggest in the Bundesliga. Almost 81,000 capacity. And the home fans have certainly been treated today. An interesting fact, Thomas, is that 
Bayern have never won the Bundesliga after Germany have won the World Cup. That's a very interesting fact. Yeah, I didn't know that, so thanks for telling me. Um... Chance there. <laughs> I'm sure for Sven Bender it wasn't far away. Dortmund almost making a bad day worse for Bayern there. Yeah. But I, I was going to say about a minute or two ago, the, um, the way Mkhitaryan was chasing the ball, it just tells the difference between these two sides and Ramos also getting in in the way. They really still want to chase the ball, want to score the third goal, whereas Bayern, they're just happy to just keep possession, don't really attack the, the Dortmund goal. Um, well-deserved win, I may say so, with three minutes plus added time to play. But Dortmund's been the better team and also mentality has been very good. And as you just said, Bayern never won it after Germany won the World Cup. Could be an interesting season then. The point I was making with that is, do you think that the physical exertions of going that long in a tournament can really disrupt your season when you come back basically without having had enough rest? Well, I think that's the point of having a, a bigger squad, you know, that in depth you have very good players. So the, the, if the, the, those who won the World Cup are not playing in the first few weeks or not at the best, then Bayern has enough quality in, on the bench to bring them on and still be the best team in, in the Bundesliga. So I'd be surprised that shouldn't be an excuse. That's why they've spent a lot of money bringing in those quality players. Uh, but who knows? Uh, at the end of the season, we can discuss that. I'd be surprised if, if they would come up with that excuse. I suppose the physical aspect is perhaps less important than the mental, having reached the very pinnacle of the sport. To keep on going, that really is the challenge, isn't it? And it maintain is. Maintain that intensity. It is, yeah. Uh, I totally agree with you. But we must not forget it. It's so hard for them. They've only had three-week break, uh, but there's so many players that have been at the World Cup. Uh, so intense it has been in Brazil. The conditions very difficult. It's hard for all of them coming back and playing at the best in September, August already. Three corners each. Bayern's third with a minute and a half to go, taken by Goetze. They'll come out to Shakiri. <laughs> Oliver chases. Important point to mention there. Stefan, uh, Sebastian Roder, who's down, by the way. Let's just take a look at that. It was Mkhitaryan's challenge. Oh, he just followed through with his shin onto Roder's there. No real malice in the challenge. I was going to mention from the corner, it was Immobile again who cleared, and he's obviously not one to shirk defensive duties. <laughs> he's not, no, no. Uh, it's about the mentality. That's what makes him so strong, being able and willing to chase lost courses even, and that's what he's done. Um, I'm very impressed by his work rate, but he's, um, people will judge him by his, the goals he will score, but they will follow if he keeps working like that. Dortmund fan singing, hey, hey, Super Dortmund, Super Dortmund. Bit of a Mickey take on the Super Bayern song, I think. Just uh, rubbing it into the Bayern fans. Who are sat rather quietly away to our right. Just a minute of added time once again at the end of the half. That's very unusual, but I think Bayern, they don't complain. They just want to get home, want to get a rest and prepare themselves for the DFB uh, Pokal at the weekend. Price and Munster for them, isn't it? It is, yep. Usually... Uh, Should be a lot easier than here tonight. Absolutely. Well, you'd, you'd certainly hope so. The DFB Cup is such that the big teams are always away to the smaller ones, but uh, Bayern could get a consolation here. Brilliant tackle, that was. Sven Bender. Great tackle from him, he's just come on and he shows what he's capable of doing. Very good challenge from him. Dortmund haven't given Bayern a sniff and they may well get a third if Mkhitaryan can get there, but it's Neuer. Immobile, it's always going to be difficult to connect properly with that one. And there we have it, Dortmund retain the Super Cup title. Two goals to nil, they beat Bayern München.
and with it they secure their fifth title. That's a record. They surpass Bayern's four. The two coaches embrace Jurgen Klopp and Pep Guardiola. And Jurgen Klopp, Thomas, has every reason to be pleased with his side's performance. Definitely. The majority of the game, his team was much better than Bayern. They deserve to win this Super Cup. Uh, see what happens in the Bundesliga. That's what he's be really interested in. But the stats look good, and um, he'd be looking forward to the start of the season. Well, it was certainly a deserved victory. Bayern started well. They had plenty of possession, but they didn't do anything with it. And Dortmund sniffed blood, for want of a better phrase, and really started to get up in their faces. Typical Dortmund stuff, pressing the Bayern back line. And eventually, they brought them out of their stride, scored a goal thanks to a mistake. And in the second half, they built on that. Yes, and, and I think we'll see a much better, much more improved side, uh, Bayern side, uh, in the weeks to come, because that's certainly not the, the Bayern team that we know from last season. Uh, of course, new players will come in. But there we see Jurgen Klopp and Lewandowski, they're still friends. No hard feelings, eh? Not really, no, no. But the fans still don't like to see those pictures. You were saying that you're expecting to see a much changed Bayern side in the weeks to come in the Bundesliga. Hence the question, what does a game like this, what does the Super Cup tell you? How much of an indicator is it for the season to come, or is it not at all? I don't think it means much for the season to come. It's, it's great winning this trophy because, of course, you know, they all play to win, to win trophy. So Dortmund's got the first one this season, but it doesn't say much about the, the forthcoming season. We remember last season, Dortmund's won the Super Cup 4-2, played ever so well, but then Bayern were the champions in March already, and they won the double. So it doesn't have an effect on the Bundesliga, but it's, it's, it's a great night for Dortmund here, and we've certainly enjoyed it watching them. Well, it's great for the fans as well to get one up on Bayern as well, their, their Bayern counterparts. and. To be fair, the Bayern fans applauding away to our right as well. They've uh, enjoyed the game apparently as well. It certainly delivered. It was end-to-end. -end. There weren't really any boring phases. There was no, uh, not too much passing around at the back. It was, it, it was two teams trying to beat one another. Yes, and I think there's so many things that can happen in a game like this. It could either be very, very quiet when no one tries to take a risk, nobody wants to get injured, or you see a lot of emotion. Sometimes it happens when two teams like these play against each other. I think we've seen something in between. Good quality football, we've seen goals, uh, good play, uh, nice, you know, good aggression from Dortmund, the way that we, we know they, they are capable of playing. So overall, I'm, I'm very happy with what I've seen here tonight, especially from Dortmund. Bayern need to raise the game, but I'm sure they will. Well, we said it's nice for the fans, nice for the players, of course, as well. Thomas, you won the Bundesliga with Stuttgart in 2007. What's it like parading a trophy around when you're down on the pitch and you've got all these thousands of fans beaming at you? Well, it's it's hard to describe, you know, because it was almost unexpected for us when we won the, the, the Bundesliga in 2007. But it's definitely the season I remember the most. There's so many great memories and the atmosphere in the camp was tremendous. Every day, you know, you go to training, you just don't want to stop. You want to continue playing all day. You want to play every single game from start to finish. There's so much joy out there. And then you compare it to those moments when you're not playing, when you're not winning, so frustrating. But winning a trophy is definitely what you want as a player. Uh, and I'm, I'm quite, you know, I envy those players down there, who've, who've, those who've won the World Cup, those who just won the Super Cup. It's always nice uh, lifting up a trophy. Of course, there was no Super Cup for you the next year. It only got reintroduced in 2010, so. <laughs> well, of course, there, there wasn't. It's not so much the Super Cup, but it's winning the Bundesliga title, the DFB Bokal and, and the World Cup, European Championships. All of those things. Um, it, it's great to win it. Just to, to see you're the best player either here in Germany or in the world for those who've just won the World Cup. What a great feeling that must be. Well, the victors will be crowned very shortly. Sebastian Kale may only be the captain for today, but he'll be the man lifting the trophy. The stage is being constructed. Bayern, meanwhile, have made a pretty quick escape. Well, I would expect him to still be out there when Dortmund received the trophy because um, that's where you expect that sportsmanship. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping to see Bayern on the pitch when uh, the trophy's been handed over. But right now, there's only Robert Lewandowski doing an interview and, and Philipp Lahm, and that's all we got to see here. Well, it's not long now, of course, until the uh, Bundesliga campaign gets underway. We've got the DFB Cup first, of course, but, uh, I mean, Dortmund kick off on the 23rd of August against Leverkusen. And Bayern, well, they start things all together on the Friday, the 22nd, against Wolfsburg at home. And those are two fixtures that, I mean, what a way to start a season. Exactly. We, we talked about Wolfsburg, we talked about Leverkusen, two very good sides. They've... Uh, you know, they've always been up there and I think they'll be highly motivated. They must have watched the game tonight thinking, we fancy our chances. Of, of course, Bayern will be playing better in, in, ten, in 10 days' time. But there are two, two good opening games that, that we can watch there. So there's more to look forward to. Dortmund players applauding their fans. I want to give it as good a go as possible in the Bundesliga and prevent Bayern from making it a hat-trick of titles. And it's not going to be easy. Bayern, of course, still with Bastian Schweinsteiger to return in midfield. Tony Kroos, uh, perhaps the biggest name to leave the Bundesliga over the summer. But uh, Bayern have got the quality. Let's not forget that they've got Thiago still to come back in as well. Yes, and Robin and Ribéry. When those four are coming back, then we see a different Bayern Munich. That's what I was talking about earlier. They make a difference. And they'll be up for it, of course, especially those who, you know, whenever look at Robin, who got close at the World Cup, who's had a very good World Cup, and then Frank Ribéry. Uh, we can expect a lot from them, I'm sure. Well, interestingly, it's the... Uh Third time in succession that, first of all, Dortmund and Bayern have met in the Super Cup. Shows the uh, how they have in German football, well, not only at the moment, but the last few years. But it's also, and I think this helps demonstrate the competition between the two sides, it's also the third time that the runner-up has won it in a row as well from the previous Bundesliga campaign. Yeah, that's why I said it doesn't really mean so much what happened last season, that's only to qualify for the Super Cup. Whatever happens in the Super Cup, who wins it, doesn't necessarily mean that that, that team's the favourite. Uh, so it was a nice evening, but the Bundesliga will be slightly different, I, I would I would expect. Just saw Manuel Neuer and Roman Weidenfeller, the uh, regular Dortmund's number one goalkeeper, having a quick chat on the bench. Obviously, became close during the World Cup in Brazil. It really did seem to be a great atmosphere in the camp. Obviously, it was put to one side during the game today. It was a hard-fought battle, plenty of challenges flying in. And, I mean, we saw with the injury uh, to Martinez, but generally, the game was played in good spirits. It was very unfortunate for Bayern and Martinez. You know, we didn't want to see that here in this game tonight, but it happened, unfortunately. So we wish him well, wish him a quick recovery. Jürgen Klopp has just uh, finished his interview rounds and trotted over to his squad. Big round of applause from the Dortmund fans. Another title for him. In fact, uh, the Super Cup remains the only trophy in Germany that Pep Guardiola is yet to get his hands on. There it is, the Super Cup trophy. Dignitaries take to the stand, the podium. Andreas Rettig, the chief operating officer of the DFL, Christian Seifert in the middle, is the CEO, and Dr. Reinhard Raubal, the League Association president. 
marvellous event staged by Germany's Football League. And certainly whets the appetite for the Bundesliga season to come, Thomas. Of course, yeah. So it was a good game tonight and uh, we've, we've seen a team deserve to win. Uh, they just got the better of Bayern. And, well, I certainly can't wait for the Bundesliga to start and I'm sure you can't either. Absolutely. Well, there we see the opening goal scorer, Henrik Mkhitaryan. Nice quick half volley, slammed it past Manuel Neuer after 23 minutes. Mitch Langerak there, didn't have too much to do in the Dortmund goal. Matthias Ginter and Adrian Ramos, two of the new signings, making their competitive debuts. No Milos Jojic today, the Serbian. Dongwon Ji also yet to return to fitness. There's the captain and the coach. Nevin Sabotic. It'd be great to see him back in action. He was uh, out of almost the entire campaign, injured his cruciate in uh, November and has only just returned to fitness. Jurgen Klopp, big cheer for him. As ever, one of the most charismatic coaches in world football. Always good for a quote. And Sebastian Kehl, the Dortmund captain. He will be succeeded by Mats Hummels, the Germany defender. And he's going to take over. But for today, it's Sebastian Kehl who lifts the trophy aloft for Borussia Dortmund. The Super Cup winners 2014. Let the party commence. Magnanimous applause from the Bayern players from the bench. And Dortmund kickstart their season with a victory over their biggest rivals, certainly for the Bundesliga title. It's been a good day all round, hasn't it, Thomas? It has been a very good day. Makes appetite for more. Uh, nice celebrations there. They look very happy. It's not the DFB Pokal, it's not the Bundesliga, but it's a Super Cup. And as I said, it's nice to, to get the trophy. And they should get a smile on their face. Sebastian Kidd is happy. Lifting the trophy probably for the last time as a captain. And who, who knows whether it'd be Matt Hummels at the end of this, this starting season. Well, that season starts on the 22nd of August. It's a Friday. It begins with Bayern München against Wolfsburg. It should be a cracker at the Allianz Arena, so do make sure you tune in for that one. Dortmund begin proceedings the following day against Leverkusen right here at the Signal Iduna Park. And we can only recommend that you come and visit it because it really is a sight to behold. This absolutely colossal stadium. Dortmund make their way from the podium. Sebastian Kehl shows off the trophy. There's Hans Joachim Watzke, the CEO of Borussia Dortmund. He's done some great work over the past few years to get this club into a position to challenge internationally as well as uh, on the domestic front. And he signed on until 2019 now, and that can only be good news for Dortmund. Yes, he's, he's done a great job in the last few years. I think the best you know, acquisition was, of course, getting Jurgen Klopp to, to Dortmund. He's changed the club around, but with him, Jurgen Klopp, Joachim Watzke and also Michael Zorc, I think the three of them, they've really turned this club into a, a top club in Europe. And that's why we see them beating Bayern here tonight. That's why we see them in the Champions League final a good year ago. Um, the club certainly at a good, good face now. And of course, everyone here in this stadium, apart from Bayern fans, hopes that uh, they will continue to work this way and be up there at the top with the best teams in Europe. Well, it really is a place you just want to keep coming back to, isn't it, Dortmund? The stadium is immense. And the atmosphere is great. It's just a club that seems to have got everything right in terms of its marketing and the way it sells itself around the world. It's uh, a friendly club that you want to be a part of, you want to see do well. Unless you play against them, like Bayern tonight, and um, 
But playing for Dortmund must be hugely enjoyable and being in the suit, on the suit tribune, of course, and for us too, watching them. And in case you're wondering what's going on at home, the Dortmund players are about to embark on something of a German football tradition known as the Humba, where there's usually a ringleader who will get the crowd going, and they all join hands and wave to the crowd, and it's all done in simultaneous fashion. That's another thing with German football. They really do interact with their fans. I mean, is this something that other leagues could learn from? I think the fans will love to see that. Yeah, Jurgen Klopp's used to it from Mainz. That's what they did there. Uh, you know, players jumping up the fence and, and celebrating with the fans. And, uh, yeah, of course, it, it's nice for the fans to see the players sitting there, taking the time, singing with them. Um, that just shows the whole atmosphere here at this club. But it's easy when you're winning. Uh, but that's the atmosphere that you want, and that's why everybody enjoys being here. Even if you're not playing, you're part of this group, and it's a special group. And who wouldn't want to sit there in front of 25,000? Well, Jurgen Klopp is a great character, he really is. He could see him there putting his hands up to his ears, urging the crowd on and joining in the celebrations himself as well. It's no wonder that the players want to play for him, is it, really? No, as I said, he was, he was so influential. He's helped players to have a great career. He lives football 24-7, and he's also been great for German football, develop, developing these uh, talents and bringing this club back at the uh, top stage, or to the top stage. Well, he's won round one of the 2014-15 season against Bayern München. It's a rivalry which has been fairly even over the past few years. Certainly in the Bundesliga, it was 3-0 away wins apiece last term, and uh, the season before that, 2-1 all draw. So it really is a tough one to call whenever these two play. Last season, of course, Bayern ran away with the title, but that isn't the norm. We can take a look at the game. In all its glory there, the opening goal from Henrik Mikitarian. Chance early in the second period for Robert Lewandowski, but it wasn't his night, was it? No, not at all. Um, we'll see more of him, but tonight wasn't the night because Socrates did ever so well to have an eye on him every time he was in a dangerous position. There, the second goal for Dortmund, which wrapped things up, and from there, there was no way back. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang rising to head in. Lucas Piszczek's cross, and that is what sealed a 2-0 victory for Dortmund against Bayern in the 2014 Super Cup. They are the winners. My thanks go to Thomas Hitzelsberger alongside me from him and myself, Andy Thank James. You. Have a very good evening. Good evening. I'm trapped in a YouTube end card. If you like that, click here to subscribe and join our Bundesliga community. Done.